Welcome to the Beacon of the Speech. I'm Fred Hunt. That's Ted Coley. Hey, Ted Coley. Hello. Ted Coley and I have been talking. I decided to hit the start button so we could finish our, confirma our, our confirmation yeah, we're, we're being story. We're confirmed today. Yeah, we're being confirmed today. My son is at a confirmation we're retreat. We're being committed today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might be being committed. My son is going to his confirmation retreat this uh, today. Right, we dropped him off at uh, technically at eight in the morning, and then we left at ten, and he stayed for the day. And I've been teasing this with Ted for the last half hour. My confirmation story has to do with beacon of speech, and you will get a kick out of it. And Ted, because I want to blow the story and then tell it half-heartedly, you know, off air. So when I got confirmed, we had a confirmation retreat. Now we're going to swing this back to Ted. Where was your confirmation retreat, Ted? So the viewers can catch up with us. Um, it was in the woods somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where it was. It was like a building. Like... But but where did you meet? You met at the wood, the building in the woods. Right. Okay. And then you guys prayed and some of you got molested. Luckily you didn't. And you were good, right? Yeah. Do you remember anything you talked about? Anything at all? Now this is at the like, at retreat? At the retreat. At the retreat. Um, not really. I just remember it was like one of the longest days of my life. <laughs> well, my son will be very happy because that's where he is right now. We're going to have to end Beacon of Speech and then I I literally drive away and pick him up from the retreat. I mean, you know it's bad when you're wishing you were in school. <laughs> that's what my son said today. <laughs> and I said, listen, nobody is happy to be here. He's like, I really don't want to be here. I'm like, listen, kid. You see every other kid in this room, they all feel exactly the same as you, right? But they wanted, when I went on my retreat, they wanted to kick it up a notch. They wanted to make sure that they talked to the youth of America because there was a scourge in 19, oh geez, what would it have been, 1982 maybe? Well, for me it was 81, 82. Yeah, so mine would have been 82, 83, more or less, okay? What is the scourge? That they had to warn me about. And I may have mentioned this very briefly on being in a speech before. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's let's go back to 1982. What is the scourge that they had to warn me about on the retreat? Um, probably like rock and roll music. Or rock something. and roll music. <laughs> okay. Rock and roll music. Okay. So I go to the retreat and it's like at 6 o'clock. And at 6 o'clock in the evening it was a sleepover for the retreat. Oh, see, we didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so really glad about we that. We were, <laughs> one week was boys, and then the next week was the girls, right? So I got the boys retreat, right? And at 6 o'clock, they said, well, we're, um, we're going to have a little snack in case people are still hungry from dinner. You know, you don't know who ate and who didn't, right? And uh, had a little snack. And then they said, we're going to have guest speakers all night. And at 7 o'clock, the priest is going to talk about Jesus and then at, I'm sorry, at 7 o'clock, a uh, priest is going to talk about Jesus. At 8 o'clock, we're going to... Now, when they say guest speakers, it's like nobody famous. No, 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 like, no, no, no. Like, they, uh, normally, if you say that, it would be yeah. like somebody like you, who you'd want to meet. Right, no, no. But it's like somebody you don't know. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> no, the one, one was the priest... One was like uh, Jimmy's dad, and he was warning about drugs, right? <laughs> and then there was the third guest speaker who was there to warn you about rock and roll. And he didn't go from community to community. It was literally like the youth minister, right? Well, I had not met him before, but he could have been like youth minister instead of for Brunswick. He could have been for Strongsville. And he, you know, for us, we didn't know who he was. For all we knew, he was, you know, vice president, right? So the point of the story is he was there warning of the evils of rock and roll. Now, year's 1982, just for argument's sake, okay? Ted Coley, who did they tell us to watch out for? Who did the guest speaker say was coming to poison our minds with satanic rock and roll music? Um, is it like a musician or... yeah. Okay, it's a specific... Oh, many, many different musicians. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, probably like Ozzy. Well, no, not only... In my head, you in my head, and they're like, we got to tell you about satanic musicians. 
first one that comes to mind is Ozzy Osbourne, you know, because they're having the trial. Or Judas Priest. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I'm 13, 14. I listen to Ozzy Osbourne, Judas Priest, right? And I didn't listen to much Judas Priest. I wasn't the biggest. But I, I liked Ozzy Osbourne. And I'm like, well, they must be talking about Ozzy Osbourne, Judas Priest. Why are we listening to music? I'm already going to hell. You know, might as well just skip this retreat, hmm. right? And they're like, the number one band... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I take that back out because I'm, I'm going way back in time. They said one of the biggest bands that people don't understand is Kiss, right? And they said, but here's the ruse. They dress up like the devil and they're like, so you can see that they're the devil. They're the knights in Satan's service, right? But we're not here to warn you about Kiss because you should know better than to listen to Kiss. You can see that they look like the devil, right? No. You gotta watch out for the really satanic bands who are trying to trick you into thinking that they are not the devil when they really are the devil, right? Band number one, Led Zeppelin, okay? Stairway to Heaven is one of the most satanic songs ever written. I'm like, Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> Isn't the song about taking a stairway to... Heaven. I mean, it's not ACDC Highway to Hell. It's Stairway to Heaven. And then the guy's like, no, no, no. The woman symbolizes um, lust. And she, if you follow the woman, the woman will take you to hell. And you think you're going to heaven. Led Zeppelin's singing about. And I'm like sitting there like, <laughs> I listen to other bands that just say like, Hail Satan. Uh, why, why are the... Why is Led Zeppelin trying to trick you? And I was like so confused. Do you remember people saying Stairway to Heaven was satanic? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that because that was one of the ones that had like, what was it, backward masking? Yeah, yeah. And there was a kid, I'll never forget, and he'll never listen, but there was a kid named Michael Reniscus, right? And he Michael, was... Michael Meniscus. <laughs> and he's sitting there, right? He's sitting there. And they're talking about Stairway to Heaven, and he starts crying, right? What the hell's wrong with why is that kid crying? Right? And he's like, I listen to that song every day. I thought it was about going to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I love that song. I want to love Jesus. I'm like, God, God damn it. And I knew I knew I was a naive kid. You know, a lot of other kids were already smoking by the time I hit the retreat. I was. But I'm like, I'm like looking at this kid, I'm like, God damn it, are you stupid? Even I know this is bull crap. And I'm naive as hell, right? And the guy's going on, and just Satan gets into the rock and roll music, and then he gets into your ears. And, and all I can think of is in my head is like, I can find a song that literally says, I love Satan. Why do I need these other bands to trick me? Right? And I didn't say it out loud, but all I can think of is like, you guys are insane. And his whole angle was, is that um, Led Zeppelin was like a gateway. Once you get into Led Zeppelin, then you find the other satanic bands. I'm like, oh, screw that. I'm just skipping by Led Zeppelin straight to the satanic bands, <laughs> right? And at this point, Led Zeppelin had been broken up for a year or two. It's like, why are they still trying to convert you to yeah. Satanism? Now, as 50-year-old Fred... I'm like, oh my God, they weren't saying this at all. They didn't care. They care about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We don't care about those kids listening to our albums. They were not trying to convert kids to Satanism. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, I, I would say so. And another huge offender, and we talk about them almost every week on Beacon of Speech, is the Eagles, the Satanic Eagles. Oh, is that Hotel California? Hotel yeah. California. Yep. And I remember thinking, did Hotel California? I'm like, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> Satan sings in harmonies, right? And it's like, oh, if I want to be Satanic, I'm skipping right by the Eagles. I want to hear Ozzy. I do not want to hear the goddamn Eagles. Right? And so he's talking and other people are like upset. And we're like, we never thought the Eagles were satanic. Well, yeah, because they weren't. Yeah, I mean, it almost sounds like they're just taking the most successful yeah. songs. Yeah, and they're like, oh, they said you still can't kill the beast. And I'm like, I mean, 
Let's see, going according to their logic, then I guess Freebird must be uh, satanic too. Well, they uh, they uh, they did talk about Leonard Skinner very briefly, and they they said some of the most popular rock and roll bands are all steeped in satanic imagery. And then I believe they brought up the Beatles, the whole Paul is dead thing, and it's like the Beatles, my mom, yeah. my mom who was sending me to this stupid retreat, you know, just like my son. My mom who was sending me to this stupid retreat, we were listening to Beatles in the car driving to the <laughs> retreat. I'm like, we're, we're really having a disconnect here, right? And I'm just sitting there quiet, you know, because again, this is not 50-year-old Fred who yells a beacon of speech. This is 13-year-old Fred going, oh, <laughs> Jesus is, uh, you know, he's not going to be happy because basically every band that they talk about, I listen to, except for Judas Priest. Right? And um, when we're done, remind me about Judas Priest. But so in my head, I'm like, oh, I am in big trouble. I'm going to have to be doing retreats like every weekend. Right? And then, you know, they, they had the third guest speaker. And you're thinking about rock and roll and kids are crying. Um, they didn't know they were worshiping the devil. It's like, come on! <laughs> right? And... So they're like, now it's time for bed. It's 8.45 or whatever. And it's like, 8 I never go to bed at 8.45. What the hell? <laughs> right? So you're, you're, you're laying in your sleeping bag, right? And you're like, uh, whoa, you know, welcome to the Hotel <laughs> California. What a I, 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 I don't understand how the devil is moving me. I just don't. Right? And, you know, Mike Reniscus is, like, in the corner, oh, amazing, great. You know, he, he's rocking back and forth, and he, he's upset. He wants to go home. He wants his parents. They never told him. <laughs> and I can't believe that you actually, it was a sleepover. It was a sleepover. Man. And so, again, we were in bed, like, at 9, and then they woke us up. The, the priest didn't sleep over. They had, like, one, one of the parents slept. And the priest came at 7 in the morning and he said, I hope that you guys were able to uh, learn the church's perspective, blah, blah, blah. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I hope you had fun with your friends. I'm like, I remember having zero fun. <laughs> like, zero fun. And I'm like, I'm never talking to Mike Reniscus again. <laughs> Screw that guy. Right? I don't think I ever did either. And, you know, the uh, I was worried about other kids playing pranks on me and, you know, giving me wedges in the middle of the night. So, in the morning, they dismissed us. And my mom picked us up and, uh, and uh, you know, she's like, yo, did you have a good time? I'm like, no. No, I didn't. <laughs> and I, so she goes, well, what did you learn? Did you learn about Jesus? I said, no. I learned about how the Beatles are satanic. And she's like, What? <laughs> Why'd we send you the retreat? The Beatles are satanic. Don't believe. She goes, what other bands are satanic? I'm like, the Eagles. <laughs> and she's like, well, maybe some of those other bands are. But the Beatles, that's, that's an urban. They told you an urban legend. Like, you know, like I'm a dumb kid. I'm like, I, I didn't come up with this theory on my own. This is what they told me. And again, the whole premise of the Eagles isn't that they were evil, they just wanted money. They're just an <laughs> evil corporation. I could, you know what, I'm going I'm to go to the, I'm yeah, going to go to my bad. sons. They're not, they're not bad guys, they're just greedy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're not bad, they're just greedy bastards. Greed is good. The devil is working through the eagles by <laughs> them being greedy bastards. They worship the dollar instead of the devil. That's that's what they should have told us. The, You know what, Gene Simmons, that guy worships money, yeah. and you know what? Um, Don Henley worships, worships money, and you know what? Paul McCartney worships money, you know what I mean? We, we were somewhere this week, do you mind if I change the subject a little? Um, we were somewhere this week, and it was, um, I heard Say 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 on the radio. Say, wow, say, that was on the radio? It was on the radio, but it was like 98.5 or, uh, oldies, whatever it was. Damn. Yeah. And, uh. I actually, I actually had that album. Really? Yeah. So, but my, I didn't know that. Um, so, my wife turns my daughter, who's on this Michael Jackson kick. She, my daughter's like, why didn't they arrest Michael Jackson? I'm like, oh, it's a <laughs> Money! 
money. That's why I didn't arrest them, right? So my wife turns to my daughter and she goes, uh, you know who sings this? And it's Paul McCartney, right? And so he's singing. She goes, I don't know, one of the dumb Beatles. And she's like, oh, yeah, very good, you know. <laughs> and then they cut into the Michael Jackson part where he's, where Michael Jackson's singing. Yeah. And my daughter looks. Oh, my God. Is that Michael Jackson with one of the Beatles? <laughs> And, and my wife's like, yes. And she's like, when did that happen? Like, <laughs> it like blew her oh, mind. You like, were, you were, how did this happen? Where were you? Were you in the car? Or? I think we were in the car and we were going to Walmart or coming back from Walmart. But it like blew her mind. And my wife's like, well, listen, for a short time, Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson were friends. Yeah. And then Michael Jackson bought the Beatles catalog. And then Paul McCartney hated him, said his worst <laughs> enemy was Michael Jackson. Because, again, he wasn't worshipping the devil. Mike, Michael Jackson was worshipping the dollar. Right? Because at the end of the day, you know, all, all these satanic bands were not satanic in the way that they were telling me. Right? And listen, I can go to any, you know, any, I almost said record store, but there are no record stores. You can go on any internet platform and find satanic bands. It's real easy. Okay? And they do not hide it. They don't backwards mask. They're like, oh, the devil, come, come give me warm embrace. Right? You do not have to try and trick people. Okay? Um, but the point of my story is, is that my, my daughter was stunned. And she goes, how, how did this happen? And um, so she's telling the story about Michael Jackson and the Beatles. And she's like, did, did, uh, did Paul McCartney know what Michael Jackson did? And my wife is like, well, I don't think so, right? And she's like, how did they not know? And then all of a sudden, it went from say, say, say to how did Paul McCartney not know that Michael Jackson was a so, child molester? So Paul McCartney's on trial. Yeah, Paul McCartney <laughs> is on trial. It's like, and poor Paul McCartney, you know what I mean? By, by all... In my head, whenever you hear Paul McCartney stories, you think of them like Tom Hanks. You ever hear Paul McCartney was an asshole or Paul yeah. McCartney told me not to look in his eyes. You, you never hear that. Yeah. You always hear Paul McCartney is a good guy. And so I think back to confirmation when they told me Paul McCartney is the devil and my <laughs> daughter is wondering why Paul McCartney didn't stop Michael Jackson from molesting <laughs> kids. It's like you create something and then people like take it way, way out of a context. Mm -hmm. It's like you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. And like I said, if we ever make it big, we won't, but say we do, right? <laughs> Fred Hahn and Ted Cole are speaking the words of the devil. Well, that's, that's how you know you've made it when, yeah. when guys like that start to accuse you of everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah. You and we bring up Howard Stern once in a while. You remember mm -hmm. when the Howard Howard Stern they were trying to shut him down, and people would listen. They would turn on the radio at six in the morning, listen to every word they he said, and then they would write a letter to the station saying Howard Stern should be banned because he's terrible. Hmm. It's like you know how much easier it'd be just to turn the dial a couple <laughs> of notches instead of listening to something you hate for four hours. But it's always their argument is they're protecting. Other people. Yeah, usually, well, I'm usually protecting children. the young, impressionable yeah. children. And one of my favorite stories is uh, South Park, right? It was right when South Park came on, and uh, the, the two creators, uh, Matt Parker and Trey Stone, and they were talking about they did not like the romanticized version of children. And they said when they were 10 years old, which was basically the age of Stan and Kyle and uh, Cartman and stuff, they said they all swore, they all said horrible things, they all did terrible things. They were not the good, innocent 10-year-olds yeah. that you see on, you know, the Cosby show or Family Ties or whatever. They said they were all filthy, talking about horrible things. <laughs> and the whole premise of the show was built off of 10-year-olds are not innocent. I mean, that's basically the premise of the whole show, right? So by the time you're hitting 13, 14, they're like, we got to protect the children from Howard Stern. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think Howard Stern's was poisoning the children's minds. Yeah, them. really, I mean, most of those kids are talking like Howard Stern even before they know who Howard Stern is. Right, right. And so that's why, in circling back to confirmation, 
And don't get me wrong. I think it's great that they're going, they're going to talk about Jesus. They're going to about reconnecting with uh, yourself and respecting your body and blah, blah, blah. Right? Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying you, there are real boogeymen out there that you can use instead of Paul McCartney. You know, Paul McCartney's the boogeyman. Right? And once your kids are like, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ted, I got I to gotta stop. Paul McCartney's giving me disapproving <laughs> looks over here. You, you can't see it. I, I definitely, I want to turn the computer around, but I don't know if it'll freeze up. I'm going to turn the computer around. Paul McCartney is on that wall, and he's giving me disapproving looks while we're doing Beacon of Speech. And I think it's funny because I'm talking about it, and he looks mad. Like, Fred, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> I'm a good guy. Me, me and Ringo are good guys. Now, I don't know about George. I don't know about John. He, and once he hooked up with Yo Yoko, he changed. But he's saying, Fred, I'm a good guy. I'm not a satanic guy. Yep. I'm telling you, if we if yeah, we ever almost, get a he almost looks hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's a there's a tinge of sadness. I'm not satanic. I'm a vegetarian. Um but the point of my story is is that uh, teach the kids about Jesus. Don't create fake boogeyman. Or if you want to say don't listen to satanic records where they scream I hate I love Satan, don't do that because they they're really out there. I'm trying to think of a good band like Ghost. Ghost is, you know, sacrifice yourself, go kill yourself, jump on the altar of the Dark Lord or whatever. If you're like, don't listen to Ghost, they'll be like, okay, tell my kid don't listen to Ghost. That's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But um, <laughs> Ted's thinking, I don't know who Ghost is, right? Well, there's a lot of people who don't know who Ghost I, is. I don't know. Oh well, yeah, but unfortunately, I do. I own some ghost records right now. Whoever, well, whoever that guy was at my confirmation, he's like, "You listen to well, ghosts." Well, you know what's funny? I this is kind of going off on a tangent a little bit, but uh, you mentioned you know Stairway to Heaven, mm -hmm. and I remember reading in a book about Robert Plant. Mm -hmm. He said that somebody. Somebody told him that the numbers on the roulette table added up to 666. <laughs> and he goes, he got out his phone, he goes, I got to tell the Dark Lord this. He, he, met, he met Jimmy Page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <don't, coughs> there are very, and I'm not saying there's none, very, very few people who are trying to convert to Youth America. The... The uh, rock and roll guys, they're all about themselves. They're all about moving units. They're all about banging the next groupie, uh, making the next dollar. And uh, I'm sorry, that's that's just funny. <laughs> the Dark Lord Jimmy Payne. <laughs> um, so anyhow, our next topic, um, I want to talk to you about, and we'll, we're going to kind of diverge from this uh, a little bit. Um, I brought it up on the phone Um this week, there was a really bad uh, windstorm on Halloween. And the very next morning, I'm watching the scroll, and there's actually schools closed because there's so much damage. And comes across the scroll, you know, at the bottom of the screen, scroll, 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 Barack Obama Elementary in Maple Heights. I'm looking. I'm like, what? Barack Obama Elementary? What? I got to ask Ted about this because this can't be more than two miles away from his house. So in my head, when I was a kid, it used to really bother me um, that people would name schools uh, JFK Elementary, okay? Because I'm like, eh, you know what? You should name a school after Lincoln, Washington. In my head, you should not name a school after a great figure for 100 years because you need history to decide whether that was a great American or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, say you name your school uh, Bill Cosby Elementary, and you're like, oh, crap, we shouldn't have done that. we got to change the name again. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, and it's nothing against Barack Obama, because I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now, because when I saw the scroll, I'm like, why'd they do that? But I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm getting old, maybe I'm a racist, right? And then I'm like, I remember when they changed 
the Washington DC airport to Ronald Reagan International, I felt the same way. I'm like, Ronald Reagan, that guy's an a-hole. <laughs> I'm like, why in the hell did you change the name the Ronald Reagan Airport? Is is that in Washington? Um I think so, but I'm not I'm not sure. Well, wherever it is, I'm like, that's a terrible idea. Just name it Washington, like Washington, George Washington Airport. You know, I'm holding my hair like I'm holding a wig or something. Name it the George Washington Airport. Don't name it Ronald Reagan Airport. Ronald Reagan wasn't that great, right? Yeah, it, it, pro it probably is in Washington because isn't uh, it's is it still called JFK International Airport? Is that in New York? I think so. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but in my head, you should wait a hundred years. So right now, if you want to start naming stuff Roosevelt, like you so, know, what was what was JFK called before? Was that Laguardia? Uh, uh, I don't remember what it was called before. Because yeah. I think there's two airports. I think there's JFK and LaGuardia. You see oh, what I'm okay. saying? So before JFK, I don't know what the name of it was. But the point of my story is, is Barack Obama Elementary. How far, do you know where the, what school that is? I do not. Okay, but it, it's in Maple Heights where you grew up, right? Yeah. And so what were the schools when you grew up? Do you remember the elementary schools? Like I knew the elementary schools in my hometown. What were the elementary schools in your town? Um, let's see. There was Raymond. Okay. Um, there was, you know, the Maple Heights High School. Right. I don't know if they were necessarily named after after anybody. Well, when I, I'll tell you, because my mom was in the PTA, okay? So there were like five elementary schools in our city. And let me see if I can name them. You keep thinking about Maple Heights um, elementary schools. But Brunswick Elementary Schools, there was Walter Kidder, who was named after the principal. And I met Walter Kidder. Did I tell you this story mm -hmm. on air? Um, when I was in kindergarten, I met Walter Kidder, and he was like 70 years old. And he loved children. He said he was going to be a principal till he died. And I think he died. And then they renamed the school. Graf it was Grafton Elementary. And then they renamed it Kidder Elementary after... Walter Kidder, mm -hmm. right? And then there was uh, Memorial Elementary. It was a memorial to the veterans, which is fine because that's just a generic name. There was Crestview because it was on Crestview Road, just like Grafton Road was. And then there was Applewood on Applewood Road. Like I said, it wasn't named after anybody. But my whole thing was, and I, I assume the same things happened in Maple Heights, somebody said, why don't we change the name of name any road, you know, Main Street. Instead of Main Street Elementary, let's name it Barack Obama Elementary. And the funny thing is, is that I think they named it that when he was president, like when he just, when he first became president. <laughs> In my mind, you should not do that. I leave it after the street name. I mean, I'm, I'm almost, I'm positive that he was president. He, it wasn't after the fact. No, I don't. I'm almost positive, and I think it was early on in his presidency. Yeah. Now, he, here's the deal. Um, Barack Obama Elementary, like I said, it's already done. It is what it is. But it's surprising. You think to Donald me. Trump will have any? That's where <laughs> I'm going with this. You you cut me off at the pass because I'm telling you, and we have to tread lightly here. Barack Obama Elementary in Maple Heights is in a place where it is mostly minority, right? Because I know Maple Heights a little bit, and that's where you grew up, and where the elementary school is now mostly minority, okay? What happens, and pick any suburb, pick a rich suburb, pick a rich suburb in uh, Cleveland, anyone you want. Rich suburb in Cleveland. Yeah, when you think of rich suburb in Cleveland. Uh, I don't know, uh, Pepper Pike. Pepper Pike. Pepper Pike, there is no Pepper Pike High School, but it's Orange. Is, is that right? Orange yeah, High that School? Sound, is that sounds right. So Orange High School, as soon as Donald Trump leaves office, Orange High School said, you know what? All the kids in our high-end high school, they all got richer. All their parents made more money. <laughs> they gave more to the alumni fund. Orange is really generic. So we're going to change the name of the school to Donald Trump <laughs> High School. Can you imagine the outrage at Donald Trump uh, at Donald Trump High School at the Ridges High School in Cleveland? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you can't name it. Just like I, 
I, I don't like the wash uh, the Reagan air part. You need to wait a hundred years until the people who are happy or unhappy, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, even JFK. I'm like, well, they shot JFK. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. And you know what? I've heard people who are alive who said they should have shot JFK. Mm -hmm. Okay, who are not JFK fans. They were big Nixon people, hmm. right? And they be, you know, in my head when I'm growing up, I'm like, it's horrible they shot JFK. You know, he was beloved. And then when I would talk to older people, they're like, what are you talking about? Why are they teaching you in those history books? Everybody I knew hated JFK. They all thought he was a, a filthy Catholic womanizer. I'm like, they didn't teach me any of this in the history book. It, no, wait a second, wait a second, give, give me this. Give me this history book. Yeah, it does not say filthy Catholic womanizer <laughs> anywhere. Nowhere. And so that's why you should wait. And again, they, they did it for Reagan. I think they did it when he passed away. They said we should do something since Reagan died or whatever. And be like, oh, no, you should not because if you name it, Reagan, you know, you might forget where the planes are, right? And all, you know, I know, the jokes write themselves. <laughs> the jokes are better coming from, like, Chris Rock instead of me. But the, the point is, is that you you got to wait. And I know how you felt about it because, like I said, I like, and I, me and Ted disagree about this, I like the way Barack Obama carried himself, okay? I didn't agree with his policies, but Barack Obama carried himself in a very mature and he presented himself as like I am the face of the nation and I think Barack Obama took that seriously and some of the things he did I didn't agree with and we'll use uh he pissed off Great Britain right I wouldn't have done it but he was he did it in a way which was very presidential okay when Don when Donald Trump takes to Twitter <laughs> Stupid American media <laughs> wish they were dead, right? And no matter which way you slice it, even if you agree with Donald Trump, and, and you agree with Donald Trump, right? To me, that is beneath the office of the presidency. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. So I like... But it's funny. Oh, but it is funny! <laughs> That's why people don't seem to understand that Donald Trump gives you free material. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Donald Trump. And two, there's two ways to do it, right? Donald Trump, that dirty bastard. He, he bangs <laughs> prostitutes. And, and then when you yell that he's a dirty bastard who bangs prostitutes, right, your ratings just went up, right? Because you're talking about Donald Trump. Or if you're defending Donald Trump, Donald Trump is sticking it to the Democrats. A different bunch of people are why you you see what I'm saying? You're playing to a certain audience. Donald Trump, when he leaves office, and let's let's say that um let's just say the sleepy Joe Biden wins. Okay? Just think about how I mean, no matter what you think of anybody as a person or his policies, uh -huh. just think of how boring it's gonna be. Oh yeah, Biden. well that, that's where I'm going. Joe Bi Joe Biden takes office and he goes, uh, you know what we're gonna do? This country is bleeding, and we're just going to sit quietly and do nothing for a hundred days. So don't, don't, don't ask any questions, and then we'll start rolling back some of Trump's bad ideas. But what we're going to do is take a deep breath, and we're going to heal, and we're going to talk in a civil voice, and we will have a adult conversation about what we want to do about certain policies that were, and he won't even use Donald Trump's name, that were uh, presented by the previous administration. And all of a sudden, ratings, <laughs> CNN, everything's falling. <laughs> They're like, we can't even talk about the presidency. He won't say anything. And you know what they'll start doing? They'll start reporting on, like, news from other countries or real news. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They won't be so fixated on Trump. And their ratings will go down because the only people watching the news are people who want to stay informed with the news. They're not trying to entertain the masses. You see what mm -hmm. I'm getting at? And the same thing with people who don't agree with Biden. They're like, I hate Joe Biden. Well, what are you going to do? Play a clip of him going like, all right, America. You, you see what I'm saying? So is that 
Is Biden who you predicted is going to win the... Yes, I did. Yeah. Because I think there's a certain portion of America, not me and not you, okay, we don't count, okay, because you enjoy the Trump show, and the Trump show gives, I mean, I feel like we're talking about it every week, the Trump show, right? Now, um, Rush Limbaugh used to say, he used to say, it doesn't matter who's president, I am, and he didn't say it, I'm making a long story short, but he's, I'm selling conservatism. I want a conservative in office, and if he's doing conservative things, I want to say what a great job he's doing. If he's not saying conservative things, I want to attack him. So it doesn't matter who is president. Well, that's not true. You see what I'm saying? Because he has more zazz or fire when there is a Democrat president because he's not getting what he wants. Whereas, you know, poor Ted, even if we're not talking about Trump, you know, we're talking about some obscure punk band that no one's ever heard of, you know, like we were talking about before we started. So it's the same thing with Trump. It will be boring. Ratings will fall. And I'm telling you, maybe we make a prediction. Do you think, do you think, do you think that Trump's getting reelected, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm telling you, I, I wish I, I don't want to make a prediction five years out, Okay. Let's say he gets reelected, okay? We'll talk about this, and you'll have to put this in your mental uh, prediction box. Excuse me. If Donald Trump wins re-election, right? Are you still looking at Paul McCartney? <laughs> I know, I was. <laughs> um, if Donald Trump wins re-election, okay, um, when he leaves office within one year, at least one major cable network will go out of business. Uh, I don't think it'll be CNN, but I think it'll be somebody like uh, MSNBC, CNBC, where they will literally lock their doors. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like one of the biggest media, because what are they going to talk about all day? Mm -hmm. And especially, and again, back to the Joe Biden example, let's just say it's Joe Biden. What are they going to say about Joe Biden, the guy who's on their team, and they call Sleepy Joe? You can't. <laughs> Attack your guy who has no, no zest to him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But I don't want to make a prediction five years out because I, if we're not here, that'll just you know. I'm still hope. I'm still hoping that something will happen. That, that we'll get a magical grant and uh, we can uh, take this to the next level. But I wouldn't bet money on it. Oh, so you're saying we probably won't be here five years from now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to worry that we might not be here in five years. That's that's, that's, that's why that's why you won't make the prediction. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but if we're still here in five years, you'll be like, hey, hey, didn't you say that MSNBC was gonna go bankrupt as soon as uh, Trump left office? I'll be like, you know, I'll probably be half out of my mind anyhow. I'll be like, I don't know. I don't remember why I said two weeks ago, let alone five years ago. Why are you holding me to that? Oh my God. Can... Do you think we'll be here in three years? I hope so. But I'm not I'm not confident of five. Um before I forget, I'm on my way here and we were talking about local radio. And um even if, nobody watches Speaking of Speech, right? There's a few people but we're we're not hitting any numbers or anything, but when when people watch hypothetically, um, I like to think that they are watching Fred and Ted, and what I mean by that is nobody knows who your dad is, nobody knows who my dad is, right? They just don't, and no offense to your dad or my dad, but they they don't know. They you know, I was driving here on four eighty. And there's a point to my story. And the two guys on 850 WKNR were terrible. They sounded like they weren't even good enough to be on college radio, right? You know where I'm going now. One of them, I didn't even remember his name. The other one was Mike Rizzo. And I'm like, this kid is terrible. How in, oh, yeah, because he's Mike Rizzo. You know what I mean? His dad is royalty of Cleveland Sports Radio. And it's like, he is terrible, right? And Mike Rizzo has more listeners than we do. 
Do you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He has a big microphone that shoots out 50,000 watts all across Northeast Ohio, right? I noticed that you don't, you don't bring up, uh, what is it, Tony Rizzo yeah. much anymore? Do you still listen to him? Nope. Nope. <laughs> because, and, he, and this is why I did on uh, the last three years, I ranked the top sports talkers in Cleveland from 1 to 25, right? And Tony Rizzo was like number two and then, then number three or number two and number one the first two years. And then his assistant, Aaron Goldhammer, is so bad, hmm. he should have been fired <laughs> five years ago. And I said, you know what? Tony Rizzo gets on the radio and he starts screaming, there needs to be responsibility for all the idiots that they hire at, uh, at, in Berea for the Cleveland Browns. I'm like, listen, you literally can reach out and touch the worst sports talker in the whole city and you don't do crap about it. So I dropped his ratings because he <laughs> wouldn't get rid of Aaron Goldhammer. So not only did I stop listening because of Aaron Goldhammer, but Tony Rizzo has said, well, you know what, my son wants to be a broadcaster, and so when I'm off, it'll either be Aaron Goldhammer or my son. And it is terrible. So he's like uh, like the Eagles, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, ju I'm just going to pass <laughs> sports talk on to my son. Your your son is terrible, <laughs> right? He's like, well, I wouldn't have kept this job unless they promised me to get my son in. You, you see what I'm saying? And I read another article this week about their a, a father trying to pass the torch to their son because the father has a great job. I don't know if you know this or not. Who did we lose to last week? The Cleveland Browns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know Patriots, where I'm going. The, the, yeah, the Patriots. We lost the Patriots. Bill Belichick keeps saying he wants to coach till he's 70. Right now he... Oh, I'm sorry. He said he only wanted to coach till he was 65. Well, guess who's 65 this year? I I actually think he's over that, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, I, he's... When he was younger, he said he wanted to coach till he was 65. Yeah, because I saw his right? son on the sidelines. Yeah, and they <laughs> said... They said, hey, you're 65 or 66, and whatever honestly, I, I don't know how long his son has been. Yeah. Like, what is he, like an assistant? Yeah, now he's like the, the honestly, defensive I, end coach. I, I didn't even know he had a son until I, Sunday. Yeah, I didn't know he had a son either. I, well, I take that back. I knew he had a son. I didn't know he was a coach. You see what I'm saying? See, I didn't even know he had a son. So they asked Bill Belichick, you're 65 or 66, whatever it is. I'm just, I'm just oh, thinking, ahead. and we're going to have to, you know, touch on this. I'm thinking about, can you imagine, like, your dad or my dad passing any <laughs> kind of thing on that? No. 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 No, my dad would be like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I had a tough enough time at UPS. You can deal with the UPS on your own. I'm not making sure you get this job. <laughs> You know, you're you got to stand on your own two feet. Um, yeah, that was never gonna happen. <laughs> um, but uh, back to Belichick, they said you're 65 or 66. You said you only wanted to coach till you were 66, or I'm sorry, 65. Can you see yourself coaching the 70s? Like, well, <laughs> 70s just a number, and I know I'm not 65. And literally, you know how Belichick is. He doesn't say he talks, but he doesn't say anything. <laughs> I know I said I was going to coach to 65, but I'm, you know, in uh, 70 is just a number, and we're going to see what happens. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to coaching Sunday, and, uh, you know, everything's just a number, and we just try and win football games here. We're not all about all this uh, other peripheral stuff. You know what I mean? I, like, all we said was, are you going to coach to your 70? <laughs> right? So, but the point of the story is, the rumors are, is that Bill Belichick now wants to stay long enough to take the baton, yeah. I'm going to take a baton, and hand it to his son and say, now you take the Patriots. And it's like, I'm not saying the son's going to be good, bad, or the other, but again, if it was... Bill Belichick's Patriots, I would understand that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If he owned the Patriots, like um, Tom Tom Kraft, does he have a son? 
I don't know. I don't know. But if he's like, you know what, I'm 90, I'm going to die, this is my business, I'm giving it to my son, I understand, because it's his business. But no matter what walk of life it is, anybody trying to pass the baton from father to son in something that they don't own is always aggravating. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And now you'd be like, oh, well, um, who, who, who tried to hand it to um, the Eagles? Oh, are you talking about Deacon Fry? Yeah, or? Deacon Fry. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, that's a little different because... He doesn't own the Eagles. The, the, the Eagles are a multinational corporation. And uh, Glenn Fry's yelling from the grave, No, no! It was mostly me. It's just me and Don Henley. Everybody else was replaceable. So that, bring us, that brings up a good question. Now, if something would happen to Joe Walsh, do you think Joe Walsh's son will be in it? No. Or no. is his son on his own? No, Joe Walsh is, if Joe Walsh has a son, they're like, screw Joe Walsh. We never liked him. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, every, again, back to the nice guy theory. Everybody said that Joe Walsh is a nice guy. He was in the James gang. When uh, they talk about Joe Walsh, um, you know, taking a lesser percentage to stay with the Eagles... You know, in Joe Walsh's mind, he's still making more money than if he was touring, doing yeah. James Gang material. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So even Joe, and at some point, he's grateful. They're like, oh, these are my friends. We're, we're all brothers. I honestly think that in Joe Walsh's mind, and I don't know this, I'd love to interview Joe Walsh, yeah. right? Do you see this as a corporation, or do you see this, you like playing music with your brothers? And I think Joe Walsh would say, well, they're my brothers. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I will mean you're going to talk very vaguely. I don't have any brothers, but you have brothers, right? Your brothers, certain brothers, are more preoccupied with money than others. Would you say that's mm -hmm. fair? And you might be like, well, he's my brother. Well, you might say that, but your brother might say, well, it's about money. Mm -hmm. And then it's about Ted after the fact. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So Joe Walsh, I have a feeling that he's a good guy with the right attitude. And it was Glenn Fry and Don Henley are like, you know what, whatever we tell whatever we tell Joe Walsh to do is what Joe Walsh is gonna do. Right? If we tell him it's we're gonna put like, him it's almost like Joe Walsh is like the little brother. Yeah, right? Joe Walsh is the little brother. <laughs> Here, Joe, eat this. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna put you on the stage. You're gonna stand at the end, you're gonna sing harmonies. We're going to dress you up like a monkey and clap cymbals <laughs> together. And Joe Walsh is like, they're my brothers, so that's what I'm going to do. Right? So, and you have older brothers. You know how it's they are. It's almost like they have a commercial, let's get Mikey, he'll try it. Yeah, yeah, he'll try anything. I ain't even there. Get Mikey, Mikey, come on over. And so I don't have that problem. I have sisters, I'm the oldest. There is no brothers. But Ted knows what I'm talking about when it comes to this concept. Because, you know, we don't want to talk about your personal life, but you know when it Brothers, certain brothers take, hmm. you know, we money is more important than other things. I just all. remember when I was a, a kid and I first got uh, glasses. Mm -hmm. I remember sometimes my one brother would take my glasses and put his fingers all over them. <laughs> <laughs> like if I set them down somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's what I'm talking about. I picture that being like Joe Walsh, you know. <laughs> Guy, who smacked my glasses? Um, we are running out of time because I do not want to be late. I want to make sure we get done by 2 o'clock. I do want to talk very briefly about Katie Hill, um, congressperson from California. Um, I wrote an article about it. You know it. what's funny? When you said oh, that name, I was like thinking, I had no idea who she was. I was thinking it was like a, like a musician or something. Oh, I think in my mind... I was combining, like, Katie Lang and Lauren Hill or well, something. Well, it's funny that you mention that because she's not a household name, right? Because we have we have congressmen in Ohio, like in, in, in uh, Columbus and Cincinnati. I wouldn't know their name. If you wrote it down and said, who is this guy? I'd be like, I don't know. And they're like, he's your congressman mm -hmm. in Columbus. I'm like, well, I don't have to know that, right? But so I didn't know Katie Hill, right? And uh, she's a very attractive young woman. would you say that's mm -hmm. fair? And uh, this week, um, pictures of her leaked out naked, smoking a bong, 
And um, it leaked out because her husband's getting a divorce. Well, how did it get to the media that she was naked smoking a bong? It was obviously either her ex-husband, right? Because who else is taking those pictures? Or the mistress because she was having threesomes. Mm -hmm. Her girlfriend and her husband that they had a... I don't want to talk about it. It's too... Now we're getting in a real dicey area where you don't want to speculate. Right? But the point is, is that the pictures leaked out to the Daily Mail, right? And they printed the pictures, and all of a sudden, places like C, uh, the Daily Beast, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, um, they're all attacking the Daily Mail like they had made pictures up out of the air. <laughs> They shot the messenger. They weren't upset that the pictures existed. They were upset that the Daily Mail printed them. Well, why did the Daily Mail print them? Because that's what they do. They're a news organization, and it was news. And so half of the news media, the news media on the left, started to attack the news media on the right. Because at the end of the day, the question should have been, is Katie... Hill, a good congressperson. That didn't seem to matter. It was all about making Katie Hill look bad, and it was all about putting Katie Hill's career out on the rails, right? What people don't seem to realize is that they did not make this up. This was real. And this is what I talked to Ted about before we started. And this is why I wrote in the article. If Katie Hill was a teacher, and we could use your school district right down the road, right? Right down the road, your school district, right down here when I drive past, okay? If a teacher, if it got out in the local media that a teacher was posing naked with a bong in her hand, how long would she have her job? She'd be fired almost immediately. Why does a congressperson think that they are better than a teacher? You see what I'm getting mm -hmm. at? And so in my mind, all the outrage is in the wrong spot. Like, Katie Hill should have came out and said, you know what? I like threesomes. I like women. I like men. I like anybody you bring by and we're going to have sexual relations. And I am a good congressperson. Whatever I do, screw you. I'm going to keep doing it. You see what I'm saying? And you know what that is? That's the libertarian philosophy, right? Either I can do a good job as a congressperson or I don't. Whatever I do in my personal life, screw you. Well, you know what's funny? It's like I'm thinking like whenever I have somebody come over here like to fix my sink right. or I don't give, it doesn't even cross my mind like what their personal yeah. life is. Yeah, you're not like, who do you think that, per who do you think the plumber's having sex with when yeah. they drive away I mean, from you know, here? I don't even, it doesn't even, literally it does not even cross my mind. Yeah. So it's like. Why? Well, it's because it's politics. Because yeah. they use anything they can to destroy the other side. Right. Yeah. And the whole point is... But th th this is my point. Katie Hill did not own it. Right? She should have been like, listen, I do what I do. I am who I am. Yeah. Right? Katie Hill should become a libertarian and run. She's got all this free publicity. Right? But instead, she's like, my personal life is personal, and you know, you know whose fault all this is? The vast right wing <laughs> conspiracy in America. Men hate me, and the Republicans hate me, and the people in Britain hate me. Like, she did not own her thing. Yeah. Right? And we, we could even take it to beacon of speech. Okay. See that that's the funny thing. Go when, ahead. Whenever you do something wrong or you do something embarrassing, the, the knee jerk reaction for most people is to try and shoot cover, the, cover it up. Cover or, up and shoot the messenger. It's for whatever reason it's very hard to just say, Yeah, I did it. Yeah. I don't know why. It's yeah. like it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah. Katie Hill should have got up there and been like, Yeah. I was in a threesome, and you know what? That girl right over there, she's really attractive, too. And that the girl in our threesome, she screwed she screwed me, but I'm going to take that girl next. Uh, come on up. You know what I mean? But it's funny because it's like it's like the easiest way to defuse anything is just to say, yeah, I did it. Yeah. yeah but like, and, and nobody can do that, though. Right, and that's the whole thing with, with this whole story. I'm like, 
I don't understand how hard it is for her to say yes. I mean, marijuana is legal in Washington. It's legal in Cal... Um, excuse me. It's legal in Washington. It's legal in California. I keep saying it wrong. It's legal in Washington. It's legal in Colorado. Medicinal marijuana is legal in California. Right? I don't know if Katie Hill has some... You know, she could have cataracts for all I know, right? I mean, she's 32. She doesn't. But she could have an underlying medical condition, right? So the point is, she could have said, owned it and said, I like marijuana. I like to smoke marijuana. Not me, because I don't smoke marijuana. But she could own it and say, listen, you know what? I have chronic back pain and I smoke marijuana. You, you see where I'm going mm -hmm. with this? And that's why... It, it was all the wrong way. And she's like, well, I don't want those pictures to get out. Well, guess what? There's lots of good pictures. There's lots of ways for those pictures not to get out. Right? And I'm going to turn it back around to Beacon of Speech. Okay? And uh, let's say they got uh, naked pictures of me somewhere. Right? And be like, oh, there's naked pictures of Fred. I take Hey! Hey! Hey, this is Fred at Beacon of Speech. Uh, CNN published naked pictures of me. Why the hell do you want to see those pictures? I'm an ugly middle-aged man. Right? I'm ugly. Why do you want to see those? And then, you know, the only person who would have those would be either an ex-wife or an ex-girlfriend, right? I'm not a model. You know, it's very clear. Right? I'd be like, listen, me and my wife are having a terrible divorce. Please... Ignore the man behind the curtain, but I'm not going to resign. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be like, well, where do you think those... The Daily Mail did not sneak into Katie Hill's bedroom and take those pictures. You know, Katie Hill's not naked, waving her on her bong. And there's the Daily Mail con <laughs> that, you know, Daily Mail reporter in the closet. Oh, I'm going to... This is... They're taking advantage of a certain situation that Katie Hill got herself into. And now you're like, well, why are you getting divorced? None of your business! <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Just who? Just own it up. Yeah. Right? We talk about stuff here all the time, and it's like, just just own. You know, some people, There, I have gained a lot of weight since we started Beacon of Speech, okay? I have. And I don't get on here. I don't get on here like... Is that because of the pressure of vegan speech? <laughs> no. No, it's because I'm getting lazy. But... <laughs> yeah, it's not a pressure of vegan speech. But let, let's just say topless photos of me. And they're like, well, you're a guy. It's different. I'd be like, well, no, but I'm fat. Right? I gained weight. I'm fat. Right? And then CNN publishes the pictures of me topless. Right? And I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so fat. I ain't used to be fat. What the hell is going on? Right? I would not be like, damn left-wingers. Damn left-wingers. You know, the people are taking, they're making fun of me, calling me fat. Well, I am fat. My doctor said once I hit 200, I was fat. He said, lose some weight. And he shook his finger at me. He said, lose weight, fatty. Right? I have to own that, that I'm not doing enough exercise to get rid of the food that I eat. You see what I'm saying? And if CNN is like, you know, they start calling me Fat Freddy and Beacon of Speech, I'll be like, oh my God, this sucks, I gotta lose some weight. Right? But, I would not be like, CNN made me fat! <laughs> and Left Wingers made me, they called me fat, yeah, because I am fat! You see what I'm getting at? Like, Katie Hill's taking no responsibility at all. Maybe you married the wrong guy, and maybe you're having a threesome with the wrong set of people. Maybe you shouldn't be doing drugs, and maybe you shouldn't be taking up. How many of the, how many photos did you see of her naked, just like, oh, naked walking around the house? Ted, do you, do you go around naked walking around the house? No. Have you ever been naked and had a guest over? No. Like, oh, hey. Hey, I, I, I'm usually naked. You know what I mean? I never even have a guest over. Well, but, but hypothetically, like, you would never answer the door and be like, Oh, Fred, <laughs> I'm going to do Beacon of Speech naked because I like being naked. You'd be like, Oh, I'd be like, Ted, why you don't put on a goddamn towel? Right? And Ted's in better shape than me. 
Like, she is owning none of this. And like I said, just own it. Say, you know what? I like being naked. I'm, I'm a beautiful woman. I'm a beauty, beautiful 30-year-old blonde in America. I got nothing to hide. Be like, if anything, you should be taking more pictures of this. <laughs> right? But she didn't. She blamed everybody. You saw the articles. She, she blamed the male patriarchy. It's like, how in the world can you blame every male over 50 in the whole United <laughs> States for you not, like, wearing clothes with, with house guests? That's you. You need to own that. And that's why I, I'm, like, so flustered by the whole story. So she, she resigned. She resigned. Did but she resign immediately, or was it... Almost immediately. Yeah. She, uh, what had happened is... Um, She's like, I don't know where those pictures came from. And then all of a sudden, they ended up on the Daily Mail. And then it went to the House Ethics Committee. And technically, and this is the technicality, you saw the picture. She's holding a bong in her hand. Like she just got to literally pulled it away from her lips. So she is doing illicit drugs, whether you think marijuana should be legal or not. On camera, there's a picture of her with illicit drugs in her hand. So that picture went to the U.S. Congress House Ethics Committee, and they were reviewing it. They can vote to censure and then kick her out, just like they're voting to kick out Donald Trump. You see what I'm saying? So did they vote, or did no? She, she resigned she, she like before like the a vote. Nick, a Nixon thing. Or she what? did the Nixon thing because you saw the picture. What's she gonna be like? I didn't smoke that bong. <laughs> You were naked holding a bong in your hand, but you didn't smoke it. I was holding it for <laughs> friend. my my friend, <laughs> your other naked friend who's over there. Let's not talk about the naked. You, you see what I'm saying? She was on camera breaking California law. Yeah. Okay? Now, because she was naked, it's not naked to be, it's not a, a crime to be naked in your own house in California. But it is... A crime to do marijuana without a special medical dispensatory or, you know, whatever it's called, from the state. So she was on camera breaking California law. They eventually would have kicked her out and it would have been very salacious because they would have brought the ex-husband up because it's obviously he took the picture and say she wanted to drag it on, they'd be like, does your wife smoke marijuana? He'd be like, you can see the picture. She smokes a ton of it. So even if she did not resign, she probably wouldn't have. She, she would not have survived an yeah. ethics thing. And she knew it. But this is the dicey thing. It's not like she was shooting up heroin. She was doing marijuana that's legal in certain states and in certain circumstances. She but, should but not in California. Not in California which, which is, for a healthy American person. Which is kind of funny because, like... Because everybody in California is smoking it. Well, not only that, but it's like... I almost assume at this point that California, it's recreational, it's legal. And it's not. No, it's not. Only medicinal. But I mean, wouldn't you assume that, too, if you didn't know? Yeah, I, I'm like... When I was trying to spit it out, I kept saying Washington and California, Washington and California, and I because I couldn't get it out of my head. It was Washington and Colorado because in my head I keep now thinking. Is it, yeah, is it it's Washington legal. State? Yeah, Washington State. So are, that's the two states where yes. recreational. Yes, is, Washington it, and Colorado. It's just those two. Yes, but at th I think everywhere except for like Alabama. Um, Utah and uh, Mississippi, you can get a medical dispensatory or whatever it's called to do it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. She would have lost. She did not want the House so Ethics Committee talking to her ex-husband. So medically, what do you have to have a doctor's like yeah, prescription? Yeah, or like uh, I have cataracts, I can't see, so I it's have just terminal like any, cancer. So it's almost just like any other prescription yeah, drug. Yeah. You have to have a doctor. Yep. Instead of, uh, uh, Ted, uh, you have strep throat, here's penicillin, <laughs> right? Uh, Ted, you're going to die of terminal cancer, here's some marijuana, you can smoke it until you die. And you're like, awesome! <laughs> I can legally smoke marijuana for eight months, 
to keep the effects of the grueling chemo from yeah. killing me. You see what I'm saying? So, but we're splitting hairs. You see what I'm getting at? She did not shoot heroin. She did not kill anybody. You see what I'm saying? So the people on the left were saying she's not unlike 2 million or 10 million or 20 million other people in California who break the law and smoke pot and have threesomes. You see what I'm getting at? So she should just, like, move to Colorado <laughs> and, and run for... But she could do that because now she's a martyr on the news. And you remember Hillary Clinton. She lived in Arkansas, but she was looking for a place to run, and she decided to move to New York State to run there. Katie Hill is 32 years old. In 10 years, she could be 42, living in Colorado. She could be a model and token it up and be like, I'm running again. And I ditched that, you know, loser ex-husband. You see what I'm saying? So we'll tie it up. But um, the, the point of my story is, is just own it. They always say that the cover-up is worse than yeah. the story. Just come out and say, you know what? Screw those guys for publishing it. But that's me. I like to be naked. Mm -hmm. Not me. I don't like to be naked. But... Uh, screw you. I like to be naked. I like to swing. I like to do, you know, A, B, C, D. Right? Just own it. Don't be like, oh, I can't believe they reported the truth. <laughs> you know, you're scumbags. But everything in that story was all factual. You see what I'm getting at? Don't... Now, if they made stuff up, you know, say they airbrushed her to have, like, horrible scars or, <laughs> you know, made her boobs smaller or something... You know, then you could be mad. Like, that, that's not me. They airbrushed it. <laughs> but you shouldn't be mad at people for reporting the truth. And again, back to the Fred Hunt example. We'll tie it up here. You know, again, say one of these catch fire. And they, they literally have the, 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 the headline, Fat Fred Hunt Violates First <laughs> Amendment. Right? I'm not going to get on. You know, what's wrong with America? CNN. CNN, they suck. All they did was report the truth, which I am fat and I am loud. And, yeah, I know. Song of the day. Song of the day. I'm going to do it. Is it okay if we do say, say, say? Yeah. Oh, yeah say, say, fine. say. And the table's shaking because I'm writing it down. Say, say, say. Yeah, Paul McCartney still doesn't look happy over there. <laughs> And uh, I'm, once we get off air, I'm going to ask Ted. I, I want to see that album. I, I don't know if he knows where it's at, but I, I want to see that. So uh, this is Beacon of Speech. I'm Fred Hunt. That's Ted Coley. Um, we'll talk about more relevant stuff next week. Maybe, Ted, I was thinking we need to do a prediction show. Maybe we'll do a prediction show next week because we, we don't have a lot of predictions. That sounds great. Okay. Prediction show next week.